there was clearly from the from the very beginning this melodic thing that I had a soft spot for that I was gravitating towards too. Look, melodic plays with your emotion, melodies. You know, emotion is melody, or melody is emotion. Uh, you, you, a, a drum beat won't make you cry. I'm Ferry Corsten from Kapel aan de IJssel in Holland. We're here in my studio, my creative little domain, where I spend uh, yeah, most of my time. I've always said I see myself as a producer first and then a DJ, because that's, that, that's how it started for me. I, I mean, I was a bedroom hobby DJ, and you know, then a second hobby started, which was producing the music that I was kind of playing as the bedroom DJ. And I had my breakthrough with, with the productions. And then the DJing professionally came sort of like after that as a result. But yeah, now it's just so, you know, one can live without the other. My taste in music and, and, and my drive what to produce and what to make is, is very wide, you know. It can go from ambient cinematic stuff to uh, absolute dance floor killer stuff and everything in between. But the one thing that's always there is um, it's, it's always very anthemic in the sense of a melody and hook. When I start with something, I look for the hook that becomes the face of my track. Instead of, you know, lots of people start with beats first and they built their whole groove first and then they start looking for a melody. And the way I think is like you can't sing a beat, you can't sing the melody and you can't explain to someone who's never heard your music before that this da -de -da -de -da -de -da, that's my song. And maybe they say, oh yeah, I know that. You know, um, so for me that's always been the drive between every track basically that I've, that I've made really. You know what, inspiration is a weird thing. Yeah, it can come from anything, really. Very often, of course, it's just sitting, playing. You know, I'm, I'm not a great keyboard player or whatever, but I can, I can look for anything, can find anything I, I'm, I have in my head. But luckily, I'm, you know, my head to my fingers kind of translation goes pretty well. At the same time, it's like new soft synths, new hard, hard, uh, hardware synths, you know. It's just like, just new sounds. Uh, you, you do something and happy accidents happen. I guess a, a really good example is uh, one of my tracks, older tracks, it's called Punk. How often have I, have I been in this place thinking like, oh, I'm gonna make a banging trance track and you know, this really mellow house track comes out or the other way around, I'm gonna build an ambient track, beautiful, I'm in this vibe right now. And I just do something, happy accident again and I end up with like a super epic trance track, you know? <laughs> Something like that, that happens quite often too. I do believe though that, you know, that whole attitude, I think really depends on how you see yourself as an artist or what your artistry is about. If you're really about going only for billboard hits, you're more confined, I would say, you know, this is the, within this space you should operate. Whereas you don't have that and you feel like, yeah, today I'll make this or tomorrow I'll do that, then shouldn't limit yourself. You know, I, I, I really think you should just let go and almost like see where the universe takes you in a way, you know? Sounds a little well, but <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. When I work on a track, I really think of the, of the dance floor in a way, in mind. I can see this, you know, 10,000 people crowd in front of me and I, I know what from, you know, because I play that all the time. So I, I know what happens when I, would just bring back that energy and then you know uh, especially when it when it, a chord change drops like that it's just you see people crying and that's just a magical moment really some of these classical pieces of music they have these amazing sort of changes of direction, if, if you will. You know, they put you in this sort of mood here and then all of a sudden there's this chord change that just like, you know, sucks you into a whole different sort of mindset. The big sort of crescendo type of moments when, when the whole orchestra swells up and becomes this big sort of ta-da. And that's the same thing with what in trance what we do with, with these filters and have these big sort of like synth, synth riffs and you keep it all small and then all of a sudden this filter opens and 
But what I love about what's happening, what happens in trance, is when you keep that melody and it and it's repeating, and you keep it really small. You know, you would say, you would think, like, okay, you know, I've heard it now, nice. But then all of a sudden, with the right break and the right build up, and then the right opening of that filter and the building of the momentum, and all of a sudden, that that the key change or the chord change drops in. It's just like it sends that, you know, the goosebumps right up again. And um, yeah, that, so that's that's where I see the relation between the two, uh, which is amazing. Yeah. One, one creative thing that I would really say, like, really say is, okay, keep it interesting enough without losing too much. And what I mean by that is, like, we have the Spotify culture where everything starts straight away, you know, and I feel sometimes the musicality of, because of that, is, is kind of gone. Start straight with the vocal, straight to the hook, straight to the bridge, and the song is over two minutes later, you know? And that's, I'm, I'm missing that sort of, like, Slight intro, telling the story still where you can. Try to find a middle ground where it keeps everything very uh, snappy, you know, but it still tells the story. That's that's definitely. Uh... I do always have this thing like, when 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 do I say to myself, this is it, it's good, you know? And it's, I can't explain it, but it's just like, how it feels is almost like okay, you have, you have like a little flat floor and there's a little hole in it and you have a little ball and constantly the ball is just missing the hole or golf right and all of a sudden pluck it sits right in that little hole that's it that's that pluck, that that feeling and that's the only way i can explain it really <laughs> yeah for what's worth Sometimes I, I'm, I'm talking to people who say like, yeah, I just started producing, you know, and I love it. So you know what? You're screwed. <laughs> it's the rest of your life. This is the one thing about this. So like, whether you make music or you do anything creative, once you've hit that thing that you're after, it's just, a, yeah, it's just the best feeling. It's just amazing. And it doesn't have, to, it almost doesn't have to be for everybody else. It's just for you at that very moment, you know? I'm happy with what I just found. This is it. This is perfect. At that very moment, it's just about what you feel. Yeah. I started working with Cubase a long time ago, actually in the days of Atari still. Yeah. I just started going out clubbing and stuff, and I met these guys that had a, had a little little studio. We sat down and goofed together and started trial and error, making music and beats and stuff. And those early days were really like one big adventure, you know, exploration and uh, doing that for the first time. And you create your first beat and you create your first song. It, of course, it sounds amazing until you put it next to the track that you really like, you know, from somebody else. Like, oh my God, it's terrible. But, um, you know, look, it's, there's nothing wrong with, with learning, keep learning. I, I still learn every day. I goof out on YouTube, you know, and I watch Don Zagala's videos because I am looking for something that I haven't figured out. And how does it work in Cuba? Hang on a minute. And then, you know, he's explaining it. I'm like, ah, okay, thanks, man. <laughs> you know, and off we go. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's a constant sort of process that um, in a way you need to be in, but also you should want to be in because it's interesting. Yeah.